Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, effective note-taking apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trenin and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today we're talking about note-taking apps and I want to emphasize the fact that note-taking is not just the art of writing down or finding a way to capture what is being said in lecture or what happens when you read, but it's actually what you do with those notes. So we're, talk about, we're going to talk about it from a few different directions, but we're going to start with actually just capturing notes. And there are a few ways to do that and I'll talk about a few options and I'll start with simple options. So um, the iPad comes with a notes uh, app that comes with every iPad or iPhone or any other device. So in the notes program that is part of uh, iOS, you can make notes, you can type them up. That's the only way to do it. There are a few reasons why you don't want to stick with this notes program. The first one is that you cannot really edit, you cannot add any kind of media, and you cannot really do anything out of just writing a note and the name of the note will always be the name of the first um, line in your note section. So there's not a lot you can do. What you can do with it is it's always there, you can email it and you can print it out if you're connected to a printer. So there are some advantages to using the notes program and if you have nothing else please do use that. I do use that in meetings and when I have ideas and sometimes just because I need to jot something down. The one advantage is if you're working with iCloud, this will be shared between all of your iOS devices and that means that it's saved somewhere safe and that you can retrieve it anywhere. So if something happens to your device, you can get it. So this is notes and these come with a, the iPad itself. The other one that is a very basic one but can help is RecordPad and with RecordPad the one thing you can do is actually record somebody speaking so if you're at the meeting or if you're in class or if students are in class and they want to record what happens in a group, what happens with individual conversation, interviews or in instruction, a whole group instruction, uh, students can record and even the instructor can record and then share it and in uh, RecPad all you can do is you can use camera or record. I'm talking right now about recording uh, the, what happens in class and then all you do is you press on the plus for new recording, you give it a name and then you OK it and all you have to do is press record and everything that happens is recorded. I do want to remind everybody, if you are recording a session of anything, you need to let everybody around know that you are recording exactly what are you recording. So if you're a student, a recording means that you need to let the instructor especially know that you are recording and they want to use that to make notes. If you are a, an instructor, you need to let your student students know that you are recording so they know that there is a record of what's going on but this is a rec pad very simple again just like notes on the iPad very easy to use. The next level that integrates the two is audio note. I've talked about audio notes in uh, the past so if we go to audio, audio note the advantage of audio note is it incorporates a few levels of input into one thing and again I've shown this before but I think it's important to go back to if you want to create a new uh, note you just press new you get a new page record it, record button and again all you have to do to start it is to press the record button you can use text here you can also use a pen so you can use your finger or a stylus to draw and you can use a highlighter you can even take a picture so here you can actually incorporate different media into one file it's still organized around that idea of an audio note so the, it will start and you can see I pressed the record button it started to record I get a time 
Uh, you get the level of recording, which is really helpful to know if it's capturing what you want it to capture. And the iPads are, are fairly good at capturing voices around uh, them. And now I can use the uh, keyboard tool. And if you have a Bluetooth keyboard, that'll help as well. And you can see that the minute you write a note, it shows up with a timestamp so you know exactly where in the recording that note was made. You can also switch to a writing pen, and then you can just write freely. This is my name in Hebrew. Or you can use a straight line tool to draw something. You can also use shapes if you want to make a diagram. So lots of options inside Audio Note. It does cost a few dollars. There is a free version. It does cost a, a few dollars if you want the full version. But I believe that if you're taking notes in this way and you record often, this is a fantastic way to go about that because you get lots of tools. You get to incorporate lots of medias. As I said, you can even take a, a picture and add it to that. So if after a lesson there's something on the board that you want to take a picture of, you can add that easily into this. And it gets saved, and you can name it to make sure that you're, uh, you can retrieve it well uh, and have it where you want it. And there are lots of ways to share. So you can share it directly to a computer using the Wi-Fi network and uh, the address. And you just log into your browser on your computer, log in the address that is written there, and you can have it. You can use a cloud save through iClouds. And uh, those are ways to incorporate those specific. You can even create folders, and you can use Dropbox to share it. So again, that idea of you're using the cloud to make sure that you have access to your materials wherever you go, and you're not dependent on a specific device. Another way to do this, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of people talk about this app, and it's one of the most popular to take notes on the web right now, it's Evernote. So if you look for Evernote, a lot of people use it. It has a lot of templates that are attached to it, and a lot of users that shares tips and ideas about how to use it. And again, Evernote, you can actually have different media input. So you can have text, camera, photos. Uh, you can have reminders. You can create lists. And Evernote allows you to organize everything around notebooks. So you open notebooks and you integrate different media. In Audio Note, we integrated everything around the recording. So it depends on what is at the center of your note taking. At the center of my note taking, for example, when I uh, when I teach, when I go to class, when I summarize things with my students, or when I go to conferences, is actually often pictures. So I would like the picture in the notebook, the notes I take while I'm listening, and the pictures I take from the lecture itself to be at the center of things. And that's why Evernote is a much better choice. And you can see, for example, I have uh, my notes from a conference I went to. And these are organized very often. You can see all of the notes that are connected to it are organized around pictures I took. So this is a picture of something that I've received during that uh, presentation or a picture of the presentation itself to remind me who and what. And you can see that then I have notes. I like to have my notes printed. So I, I type on uh, the virtual keyboard. You can have also, again, those that are using external keyboards. Um, you can use external keyboards. But you can also add different things to it. Why do I like Evernote? I like Evernote just like the others. It exists on the web. It is basically in the cloud, in an Evernote cloud. And that means that you can retrieve it from any device anywhere in the world as long as they ha you have access to the web. The second thing is that you can use tags to categorize what you've seen. So you've got, you organize it by notebook, but you also organize it by tag. So if you want to identify everything that's got to do with math, or in my case, everything that's got to do with research methods, I can do that. Any presentation that was connected to iPads, I tag it iPad, and then I can search it that way. So you have a powerful search tool that helps sort through and collapsing so you can see the ways things are connected. So I love the ability to have tags. And the fact that all, all of them are tagged also by the title and uh, by date and by location. So it automatically 
creates a geotag that says this was created in San Francisco in, in 2014 and you know immediately that that's when you went to a conference. So I love uh, using Evernote to organize my notes, especially when I go out and I need uh, to later go back to these notes, search through them uh, and really make sense of them. The last one um, that I want to talk about is penultimate. And penultimate is again organized and connected to Evernote as you can see and it's organized in notebook. Penultimate is, was really created to have uh, handwritten notes uh, organized. So you choose a pen and then you draw your notes. You can see that you get a fairly large page to write in and you can go to a new page and start writing. It works very well especially if you've got a stylus. I don't have a stylus but you can easily see how a stylus can help you write clearer and uh, smaller and again you can integrate pictures and you can have different paper at the background depending on what you like. I personally like uh, graph paper just because it helps orient me but uh, you can choose whatever you want and again it is integrated into Evernote so it's a way again to save everything and to have a record. This would make a lot of sense if most of what you do is take handwritten notes penultimate would be my choice. So today we talked about a few ways to take notes. Next time we're going to talk about ways to organize your notes in meaningful ways and create uh, brain maps or ways to organize those notes to highlight connections um, and organization so you can remember them better. So I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.